blesses, he's the one who turns curses into blessings. You know, when I got saved, I helped lead, well, before that, I, I helped, I was part of helping a friend come to the Lord, but I wasn't saved, but I helped him. I led a few people to the Lord without knowing the Lord, without being saved myself, because I knew it, but I didn't want to do it for myself. But so, so finally, my friend got saved, and when he got saved, it was like, he said it was like lightning in it through his body. So I thought, okay, you get saved, lightning comes in your body. I went up a mountaintop, I kneeled down, I prayed to the Lord give, to give my life to the Lord to receive him, and I thought there'd be something like maybe a sign, maybe a, you know, maybe a, you know, a bell or so, or a, or a, you know, hey, number 503, he came in, you know, but there was nothing, and I thought, wow, maybe something went wrong, and, but when I went back to work, I was in college, I was working as a security guard at, at night studying, and, a, and the, the cleaning man, a black cleaning man, looked at me, he said, what happened to you? I said, what do you mean? He said, you got that glow. Now, I didn't see it, but he saw it, but one thing I knew is that that first week, some things could not come out of my mouth anymore. That very first week. <clears throat> it was like my, something awoke in my heart, and I, what I could not curse anymore. I could not curse. Many of you used to curse. Your Messiah says, what comes out of your mouth reflects what's in your heart. We cursed before knowing the Lord because we were not a blessing. We cursed because that's what we did. It was in our hearts. We live for ourselves. And one of the signs of salvation is you pretty much stop cursing. Why? Because a blessing doesn't curse. Now you're called to be a blessing. Once we were living curses, now we are living blessings. And so the question is, but even in the Lord, we could still be going on the old and not realize who we are and how we are to live. What is your influence on the world around you? How do you affect your family? How do you affect the world? How do you affect the people closest to you, people far from you? When you walk in a room, does it light up? Or does it light up when you leave? <laughs> Some of you walk into rooms and your relatives will put on garlic and hold up a crucifix. <laughs> and what's worse, they're Orthodox Jews and they're doing that. That's a bad sign. Bad sign. Do you? But what is the effect of your life? You know, there's a Proverbs... Proverbs 27, verse 19, that says, As in water, face reflects face, so the heart of man reflects man. Now, that can be taken a few ways, but one way is that the heart of a man reflects a man. The heart of a person reflects another person. In other words, the heart of, of people around you in some way reflects you. I mean, they have their choice. It's not complete or total. They have but... In some way, what is in their heart or their face, what is there is reflecting you when you come into that room. What happens to their countenance? Do you, I mean this for real, what, do, do they light, do they, is there a joy? Is there a lighting up or is there something else? Amen. Is there something else? In part, that is a mirror, especially with the people you're close to. What is your effect? What's your actual effect? Not, not what's your talk. We must speak the word, we must speak, but what is the effect of your life about the, on those around you, the, on your spouse, on your children, on your parents? Do you, or do you have no effect? Is it that your presence doesn't really do much? It's neutral. Is that what you want your life to be? Is that what Messiah called you, called me to be? He said you are the light of the world. That means you have an effect on the world. You are supposed to light it up. In Zechariah 8, verse 13, God says to Israel, Just as you, Judah, and Israel have been a curse among the nations, so I will save you and you will be a blessing. Don't be afraid. Let your hands be strong. He's saying you were a curse. Now you will be a blessing. That is the effect of being saved. That your life goes from being a curse or having a negative effect to having a positive effect around you. You are to be a blessing that walks, a blessing that talks, a blessing that has thoughts, a blessing that has muscles, can do things, can affect things, but it's all to be part of a blessing. God said to Baruch, whose name literally means blessing or blessed, blessed. He said in 
Jeremiah 45, the word of God, the word came, Jeremiah the prophet, he spoke to Baruch. And he ends up saying to Baruch, he's saying, Baruch, you say, you're saying, woe is me. You know, the Lord has given me grief. And he says, thus you shall say to him, listen, basically he's saying, I'm going to judge this, this people, but for you, don't seek for yourself, Baruch. Don't seek for yourself here. I will give you your life and I, wherever you go. But, but Baruch, don't seek for yourself. And one of the things about a blessing is that characterizes a person who is a blessing is that you don't live your life seeking for yourself. Amen. To be a blessing, you have to start thinking like a blessing. Baruch is saying, don't seek for yourself, Baruch. I'll take care of you. But you cannot live if you're living to think now, okay, how can I get this? How can I get this? How can I get this? How can I do this? How can I defend myself? How can I, how can I advance myself? That's not a blessing. Because a blessing must resolve. A blessing blesses. A blessing gives something. So that means your whole life, is to be a blessing, you must appoint your life to give to bless, not to take. You know the word blessing in Hebrew, baruch, means not only that, it comes from a root word that means to bend your knee. In other words, to humble yourself. You want to be a blessing, you have to be humble. You have to have no ego issue. You never see a blessing with an ego problem. You examine, oh, you'll never see that a blessing is there to bless. You know, one of the things when you say, you look at the blessing, baruch, what's the next word of almost every Hebrew blessing? Ata. What does ata mean? Uh, what does it Tom mean? You're very, what does it mean? It means you. Ata, blessed are you, blessed art thou. Ata is you, so what's the, what's the connection right there? What does it reveal? Blessings are linked to the you. It's a you-based life, not a me-based life. It is a thou-based life. First, being God. Baruch, Ata, Adonai. Blessed are you, Lord. It's a, it's a life that's not focused on itself and what it can get, but it's a life that's focused on you, God. First of all, over me. Your will, ata, your will over my will. An ata-based life. Your desire, God, over mine. But then, if it's a, a, a you, a thou-based life, an ata-based life, then it's not only going to be to the Lord, it's going to spill over to all those who are in the image of the Lord. In other words, you're going to be a person who blesses others and you bless the Lord as you do.